Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today I'm going to be taking our singularity just a little bit further, and we're going to be talking about some cool stuff you can do with responsive grids. Now, in the last video, we made a asymmetrical grid. Um, you saw we defined it by saying we have three columns, uh, well, one one column that's the size of three columns and one column that's the size of eight columns equally. And then we assigned our left bar to the the small column and then our uh, main content to the the main wide area. So this is great, but what happens if you want to make this grid a little bit more flexible? Because right now, if you come to our, our page here, um, this is what our grid looks like. And in fact, if we just, we make it, you know, smaller, okay, it goes to one column, cool. And sure enough, we could say at other breakpoints, you know, maybe move these around or something. But we, we have this asymmetrical grid, and, and even though it, it does everything we need it to do, it's pretty inflexible right now. Luckily, what we can do is add more columns or different size columns at different widths. And we can do that with a, um, a variable that calls a function called add grid. And we can come in here and let's just say that to start off, this whole thing is only gonna have one column, right? Sure, because right now it just has one column. However, at um, 650, we want it to do something different. So we can say grids um, one, and then we're gonna define grids again. However, this time we're gonna say add hyphen grid, and then in parentheses, we're going to say what the grids we're going to add are. So we could actually give it things like, um, perhaps this is going to be three columns at, and then 650 pixels, right? So we can say here at 650, we're going from one column to three columns. So let's see that in action. If we come back to our page here and we refresh, we'll see that we have gone to um, what would be three equal columns if we had three paragraphs, right? So it's now one column and then now it's going to three columns. Okay, well that's great. Uh, but what happens now if we want this to now change a little bit more dramatically. Now we want this to turn into something asymmetrical. Well, we can come in here and we can add another one of these. In fact, we can just keep adding these at any given point as long as you're progressively adding them. So what, it's, uh, what it means is really this assumes that you're building mobile first. So the first one is starting at your lowest and then you're building up, right? So this one we can say at 850, now go to three, uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to type here, three and eight, like we had it before. So let's refresh, let's refresh our page, and you'll see that nothing has happened here, right? I mean, this page is clearly wider than the 850 that we told it. However, we don't have that asymmetrical proportion that we wanted. Well. What you have to do is you have to uh, have another media query for that breakpoint where you actually reassign them to the grid based off of the new grid. So the new grid was very similar to the old grid because we're both gonna have them be the first column, first place, first uh, one place at the second column uh, for both. So now, we refresh and we now see that our three and eight grid is now taking place at 850 and up. In between 850, it's gonna go to three columns, like here, and then after 650, it's going to go to one column. Okay, now let's try it even more radical than that. Let's come in here in our grid, and let's add one more, and we're gonna say at um, 1000, 250, let's go to something totally wild and we're gonna do like seven and one. Okay, now once again here, we're going to come into our mix in and I can really just copy this because we're still keeping the left bar in the first and the right 
uh, the Continuary in a second. To illustrate this, I'm quickly going to modify our HTML just a little bit. And I'm going to put a h3 in here that says left and then I'm going to put an h3 in here that says main. Okay, come back. You see now that our window is greater than uh, 1250. So we now have the left column is taking up this giant seven and this is taking up one. As we get smaller, 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 we now have our three and eight. And then now here we have our three, three, and three. And of course we have our one column like we've had the whole time. What's cool about this is, let's say we wanted them to sort of switch positions, right? So, um, so here the left is on the left the whole time, right? Uh, but what happens if we want the main content area to now be super wide, but the, con uh, the sidebar to be on the right? Well, Let's actually swap some numbers around here and we should be able to do that. So we're going to do that in this largest one. And now all we have to do is say that the left bar starts in the second column and the content area starts in the first column. Come here, we refresh, and the main column is now on the left, the left bar is on the right, and when I notice when I hit that breakpoint, it totally swaps. So this is just, um, I don't know, these this singularity and the latest version of Suzy, which I'm gonna go over too, are these just two amazing new grid frameworks that are totally flexible and can really handle anything you throw at it. So that is some more fun with responsive grids. Now I should note if you are not keen on doing uh, mobile first for some reason, although I probably would recommend it. Um, you could of course define a variable that says mobile first and then false. And of course you would have to take all of these grids and move them in the opposite order. And then you would want your CSS to also be not mobile first. So, I mean, really, I would just recommend doing it mobile first. It really seems to be the best practice. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Level Up Tuts. We're gonna be talking about a few more things on Singularity, but I'm also going to get started on a Suzy tutorial series because I know a lot of people have been really interested in that. And more importantly, Suzy version two is uh, like out. I think it's like in pre-version right now, but it's, it's awesome and it's exciting. And what it does is it actually takes some ideas from Singularity. They talk about that a little bit, but it's, it's pretty darn cool. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video. Hit us up at Twitter or Facebook on our forum. Let us know what you think. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.